Thanks for sharing your Saturday with us here on RT International. Uh, take a picture, record a video, get directions or a flight time, all hands free. And Google Glass plans to go much further. The company has been awarded a patent for a recorder that will capture literally everything you do. Uh, based on the recordings, you'd be able to look back at the people you met, uh, where you went, and what was happening while you were there. Now, the whole idea of recording your life has been imagined before, perhaps uh, with a suggestion the results aren't always entirely predictable. Now, is that funny? Just What's been going on? Nothing has been going on. Well, cybersecurity experts say the new technology may change the whole concept of privacy. It sounds terribly useful indeed. For example, if you've got a bad memory because of medical reasons, if you're involved in research, or if you actually want something or someone being able to say exactly where you were at any one time, what you were doing, it could certainly potentially mean the end of privacy if you're not very careful and if you end up giving information about yourself or allowing access to this data to somebody who you weren't aware was going to have it. But you need to be very careful who has access to that data. And because all the information is being update, uploaded to Google, Google's servers rather than kept on your own PC or your own device or your own phone. But if you're wearing this device and suddenly you come across a bad memory or you see something you'd rather forget, then there needs to be a way of saying, you know, don't record this. I don't want to hear about it ever again. Now, the opening ceremony of the World Championship Tank Biathlon 2015 has just finished in Alabino. It's uh, near Moscow. You can check out some amazing aerobatics performed by uh, Russian fighter jets as well. Yeah, here are some more highlights from the show in the Moscow region. Look at this. Uh, helicopter aerobatics, acrobatics, tank maneuvers, many other stunts performed during this uh, greatly contested annual series. Uh, great footage right there. More of that at RT.com. For now, the U.S. military uses private sector firms at the heart of its drone operations. The Bureau of Investigative Journalism has revealed that contractors called screeners analyze video feeds from the battlefield and ID potential terrorists. The data is then passed to the pilots controlling the drones. And here's how one such analyst who didn't want to give his real name uh, described his job. As a screener, anything you say is going to be interpreted in the most hostile way. The position I took is that every call I make is a gamble, and I'm betting their life. When you mess up, people die. Now, the largest number of civilian casualties caused by drone strikes is in Pakistan. And the Bureau of Investigative Journalism states that up to a thousand deaths have been recorded over the past decade. However, they admit that the level of involvement in the CIA drone campaign by private contractors in Pakistan and Yemen remains unknown. Now, RT's Guyane Chichikan now with a closer look at that report. In the war on terror, there is a very sensitive job of looking at millions of hours of footage collected from surveillance drones and other sources and reporting suspicious activity to people who call the shots. That job in the United States is increasingly taken by private contractors. They now make up 10% of all so-called screeners or image analysts who help determine targets for the Pentagon to fire at. 
The contractors openly advertise their skills on everyday job sites, such as LinkedIn, and highlight their part in killer capture operations. With the U.S. targeting ISIS and expanding its war on terror, the government plans to hire more contractors, which raises questions as to its ability to provide due oversight. U.S. private contractors on the battlefield have earned a bad name with incidents such as Blackwater's killing of civilians in Iraq. But in this case, the government may argue nothing to worry about because the contractors are far from the battlefield and they don't call the shots. Well, even well-trained military personnel have all too often mistaken civilians for terrorists. The job of the screeners becomes critical. In Washington, I'm Gadish Chekhan, RT. The Blackwater case that Guy and A mentioned there caused shockwaves in 2007. Four employees of the U.S. military's private contractor firm opened fire on a crowd of unarmed Iraqi civilians using machine guns and grenade launchers, killing 14. Following a trial in America in April this year, one of them was sentenced to life in prison, the others getting 30 years behind bars. All right, some other headlines in brief now. Hundreds on the streets of Freital, a town near Dresden, to protest against recent alleged racist attacks on refugee centers. Uh, rival nationalists also took to the streets of the town despite a ban from authorities. Uh, police tried to keep the two groups apart and constantly had to intervene. Uh, a string of attacks have hit Freital over the last month after it was announced 280 refugees would be housed in one of the town's former hotels. A series of wildfires in California are being fanned by winds and high temperatures. The fires have so far destroyed a number of homes and forced hundreds to flee. As well as battling the flames, firefighters have been helping to rescue animals left behind by owners during the evacuation. Uh, 18 fires are still burning, mostly in Northern California. And several trucks in Turkey have been ambushed and burnt out, reportedly by members of the Kurdistan Workers' Party. It was followed by a gunfight nearby with security uh, from uh, the Turkish side. Relations between the Kurds and the government have broken down after the Turkish Air Force began bombing Islamic State positions in northern Iraq, while at the same time hitting the camps that belong to the Kurdistan Workers' Party as well. Now, since the U.S.-led bombing campaign against Islamic State began last August, Washington has spent more than $2.7 billion. But despite the figure, an estimated 10,000 terrorists killed, America's intelligence agencies admit the jihadist group is not weakening. Not long ago, though, President Barack Obama was bullish about the effectiveness of airstrikes. Our coalition is on the offensive. ISIL is on the defensive, and ISIL is going to lose. Well, earlier, we spoke to Ryan Murrow, a national security analyst for Clarion Project. It's a news website which focuses on extremism. He explained how Islamic State has managed to attract support. The Islamic State is the product. It's the product of a radical Islamic ideology, and there is a high level of approval for things like resurrecting the caliphate, waging violent jihad, implementing Sharia governance. And so ISIS has a lot of supporters that they can pull from. As a group, they may be only a minority, but the broader concepts that created ISIS uh, that is popular around the globe. You have to divide it by a monthly tally. So if you divide it, depending on which numbers you go by, you get a kill rate of about 850 to about 1,200 members of the Islamic State per month being killed. But the reason that's not making an impact is because if you look at the flow of foreign fighters and the estimates of that, people going to join ISIS from around the world, it's almost the same amount. So at best, we are breaking even, and those numbers don't even include the Islamic State's recruiting within places like Iraq, Syria, Egypt, and elsewhere. Well, thanks for joining us. Up next to Renati International, declining incomes and the rise of the machine. The Kaiser Report, next. <laughs>